So I've had a couple of people uh, direct message me asking me what it is uh, when I talk about financial literacy and being a financial coach. What is it exactly that I do? Um, so I figured I'd make like a really short video while my daughter's doing tutoring before her football game on Saturday morning, telling you what I do. So I'm actually a financial well-being coach for a nonprofit called Operation Hope. Operation Hope is funded by John Hope Bryant after the Rodney King riots in Compton, California. As a way to uplift community through um, financial literacy education. Um, financial literacy is a basic human right. It is not a secret club, a sorority. Um, you shouldn't have to pay for it. And you don't know what you don't know. Um, so if you grew up in poverty, statistics say that your parents grew up in poverty, grandparents, so on and so forth. So they do not have the skill set to teach you about basic financial literacy. It's not taught in schools most of the time. A church sermon will talk about tithing. They'll tell you that the tenth means 10%, but they don't tell you the how or the why. Um, it's not something... Um, I mean, there's there's like Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, um, but they charge. And not only do they charge, they preach and tell things that are applicable or realistic for, let's say, the average human. Most people can't afford to pay um, cash for a house. So it's not about not having a credit score. It's understanding credit. So we teach you the basics of uh, finance, the fundamentals. Um, just like in basketball, you have to know how to dribble and shoot. Um, all the fancy tricks are all well and good, but to win the game, you have to understand the basics. So we teach you about saving, budgeting, um, understanding credit, what goes into a credit score, debunking myths. We also uh, talk to you about your goals, um, give you different strategies and perspectives, challenge you, um, really pick out and tease triggers, spending triggers. Uh, challenge your mindset because the biggest piece is to, to break the poverty mindset, right? Um, because you cannot out earn a poverty mentality. There are doctors and lawyers that come through our program that are heavy earners um, on the salary, but they are like literally one paycheck away from being homeless. I also have um, people who are um, dancers, right? Um, they're straight cash pay, and they have more stability financially uh, than some of my doctors and lawyers, um, and a lot of times you would think it would be opposite. Um, we work with people transitioning out of prison, better women's shelters, uh, drug rehabilitation facilities, again, doctors, lawyers. It's uh, open to anyone. The only requirement is that you be 18 years of age, that you live inside of uh, the continent of the USA, and um, that you be willing to try. This is not, um, this isn't a diet pill. This isn't a wave a wand over your finances and poof. Um, it's magic. You know, we're not financial fairies. Um, this is hard work. This is not a credit repair service. I do not do the work for you. I give you the tools and I push and try to motivate you in the direction. However, at the point that I realize that you do not want to better yourself, you simply exit the program. That's it. You're not obligated to anything. Um, everyone starts off at a different place. Uh, so that's why we do an intake process. Um, different people, um, like I said, different people start off in different places. Um, different people know different things. Um and have a different view of, of um, what financial literacy is. Um, it's kind of like this. And so this will be the last thing I say. It's no charge. No charge for you. I hate using the word free because it devalues what we do. If you have insurance or any type of medical health care coverage, Medicaid, Medicare, um, or an ins insurance plan, you usually will go to the doctor once a year for a physical or to the dentist to get your teeth cleaned. Um, you go, it doesn't charge you anything to go. They look over everything, make sure you're fine, give you suggestions. Hey, maybe you should floss your teeth more. Um, here's some toothbrushes and toothpaste and floss. Um, you go to the doctor. Hey, your blood pressure's a little bit high. Um, maybe you should cut back on the salt intake. Or you're a little bit overweight. Just something you want to think about at your age. Um, and then you take the advice or you don't when you walk out. Um, and that's basically what we do. Um, 
it's not an easy road. Um, if it was easy, everybody would do it, and I would have a 100% success rate. As hard as I'm trying to work myself out of a job, um, most people don't want help. They think they want help, but then they don't, really, because they're not willing to sacrifice. They're not willing to give up. They're not willing to confront their demons. They're not willing um, to do the hard work that it takes to get where they want to go. Um, understanding your finances is freeing, right? Understand and challenging your relationship with money is freeing. It's freeing, right? If you believe in the Bible, the Bible indicates in several different ways to not be a slave to the lender. In the Bible, when it talks about um, what Jesus said, if you pull that from the Bible and other scripture, it talks more about stewardship finance, lending, um, giving, more than it talks about heaven and hell combined. Here's an interesting fact. When I worked in banking many, many years ago, and checks were still like the predominant way for people to pay uh, their tithes, statistically, people paid, wrote, not paid, wrote more bad checks to churches than any other institution that accepted checks as a form of payment. Right? Why? Because people get excited about the preaching and they want to be seen giving. Even if they don't have it to give. So, that's something else, you know, that we address in the system. Like I said, all walks of life, we meet you where you're at. It's not one size fits all. You know, it's not this, well, this isn't the sister traveling hood pants of, of finance. Um... You know, I've got gentlemen that are coming out of prison. They understand prison economics. Ho-hos, ramen noodles, uh, coffee packets. But they're intelligent. They're super intelligent. So we take what they know and we try to translate that into today. Then I have doctors and lawyers who are super, super educated. Lots of pieces of paper hanging on the wall. Really impressive jobs. They know nothing. Not all of them. But most of them know nothing about finance. Nothing. Anyway, I know this video is long, but I get this. I get a lot of these questions, and I think people are afraid. And it's kind of like, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid that you're going to have to give something up? To, but why would you not give something up if you know that you're going to gain something in the end? Two things happen in this life when it comes to money. Your money runs you, or you run your money. And I have been right at the edge. I've never been on public assistance. So, you know, my personal knowledge is limited in my life experience in terms of the stress of lack of money. But I will tell you, I've had to the point where I've had like <clears throat> two or three bucks in the bank. And then that's all I had. There wasn't no eating out. I was a single mom. There wasn't no eating out. There wasn't no extra. And then I've had 12 to 24 months of my living expenses in a savings account. Right? Making the same amount of money. Let me tell you. Not to be, not to say like it's a wealth thing. But that 12 to 24 months in the bank, that's where it's at. That's where it's at. I call it your mm -mm money, meaning at any time somebody at your job upsets you, you, you can tell them to mm -mm off and walk right on out the door, and for 24 months, you'll be just fine. Now, that's not the smart thing, and that would not be my recommendation for you, but I'm just saying, having that in your back pocket gives you a cushion, and I, I you can give me a hundred ways that you can't do that. In the program, I'm going to give you a hundred ways that you can. It just won't be as fast as what you want it to, to appear, to come to fruition. But you, in this program I have figured out, the biggest roadblock is ourselves. So once we get done tripping over you, we make some in, impactful uh, movements. I've got men that have come out of prison that people would say, N nothing homeowners 
homeowners running their own businesses, not because of anything I did. They did the work. They did the work. I gave them the plan and they did the work. And that's not everybody. That is actually a small percentage that comes through the program. But if you're interested in finding out more specifics, send me a private message. We'll set up an appointment. We'll go through the process. It takes about an hour for uh, an individual, two for a couple. Um, if it's not for you, you take what works for you and leave the rest and move on. Like I said, you're not obligated to anything. I don't get paid by the I don't get paid by the client. I don't get paid for anything I refer. Um, I make referrals. Let's say for home ownership, I make mortgage mortgage lending referrals based on what works best for my client. If it doesn't work. I don't refer it. So, anyway, I know this was a little bit longer than what I intended it to be. But if anybody has any further questions, feel free to ask. I am an open book. The only stupid question is the one you didn't ask. Um, I don't have any problems running through um, what's what. I don't have any problems doing this and answering financial questions. Um, maybe for someone who isn't comfortable on entering the program yet but wants to know something, send me a DM. I'll make a small video. I'll post it. You can look at it and have your questions answered that way. All right, guys. Have a great Saturday. Be blessed.